Hello, everybody. So with this episode, I want to talk about tournament expectations. Um, it's something that I've kind of learned the hard way through and I wasn't prepared for. So I just feel like I want to do a community service and prepare everyone for it. The first time you go to a local eight band steamroller, um, it's you're probably newish to the game. It's you're going to see things that are just better than what you're bringing. It's going to be different than game night. It's going to be a little bit of a shock, but hopefully it'll be with people that you know, with friends that you know, and it'll be a good time still. Um, it's, it really should be a good time. Also, first, before I continue on this, uh, first little thing, I've expanded my skill sheet and add top, to, top medalists. I realize as I prepare for the game using my skill sheets, a lot of what I do on the skill sheets is is based on what I am playing against. So this is my way of tracking what's out there. It's something I'll be adding to the uh, dash and then the letters afterwards in capital are the theme force that it's in. And I didn't break down each list. I can uh, on request for people, but there's a, there's a lot to it. Okay, so back to local tournament. So you've done your first, first local tournament. Maybe you've done two local tournaments. Maybe you've done three, four, five. You've gotten pretty good at local tournaments. Now let's say you're the top dog at your local tournaments and you're taking them down. When you go to a four round or a five round or a six round event with uh, 16 people or 32 people or 64 people, things are going to change because they're going to be pulling from all the local metas around you. And where you were the top dog in your local meta at your local steamrollers, that is sort of the expectation at these four to six round events where you're going to be playing against people who are also the top dogs of their metas, or they're really good players in their metas, or they just want to be on the tournament scene. Um, and these players will typically be playing the best lists. They will be playing tournament competitive lists. They will be playing things that are rocking and shaking up the meta and people haven't figured out entirely and sometimes that'll just be a bait and switch they'll be playing they'll bring that top level list but they'll actually have a list they actually want to play and it'll create a list chicken scenario and out of terror and fear or whatever you'll drop against the uh you'll drop expecting the terror list the the list that is terrorizing the meta and they'll drop their other list and they'll have a, a list chicken win so that is something that you should expect. Um, and at this stage, I just want to say to you, if you haven't played your opponent's list and you haven't played your opponent's caster, you are probably just going to lose. And that is completely fine. That is normal. I have gone through that. Everyone, has, everyone I know has gone through that. I have never met someone who just bull craps his way through this and wins every single game regardless if they've played the tournament list or not um it, it's just not the way things go i mean it can it can go that way it's just it has not been my experience that that's how this game works um your first bigger tournament is probably going to tear you up hopefully you have people there that you're enjoying it with um but it will be a learning experience why do it it will teach you, it will build you, you will get better, you will know what's out there more, you'll go back to your local tournament, and you'll stop teching for your local guys, you'll stop thinking, and they're going to beat you, and that's that's fine, And but you're, you're going to have higher sights, you're going to have higher goals, you're going to have somewhere that you want to get to, uh, you're, you're going to see this this bigger plan type of thing. And I really do mean it when you go to these tournaments, don't build crazy expectations. Now, if you go to a lot of local tournaments and you know the people there and you've beaten most of the people there, that's when you can start, can sort of start to set standards for yourself. Like I'm going to be a two and one player, or I'm going to I'm going to three and zero this event. Um, and then once you start going to these bigger tournaments and bigger tournaments and you know everyone there and you know everyone from the states around you or the provinces around you or whatever, um, and you're, you've become a much better player, then you can start setting your standards a little bit higher. Like I want to be four and two, or I want to be four and one, or I want to be three and two, or I want to be two and three. Uh, but I don't, don't expect to just walk into these bigger tournaments that you've never been to before and have success. 
Um, it, there's going to be a lot of shell shock and I just want everyone to be prepared for that because it can really get you, um, can shatter your expectations of what you think. Um, you do well against all your local guys and then you walk into this bigger tournament and all of a sudden it's high reclaimer adjudicators and your whole army just melts off the map and you're like, I don't even know how to play this game. I don't even know what just happened. It's, it's just complete shell shock. Um, and maybe you're prepared against high reclaimer adjudicators or whatever. So you make it through round one and then all of a sudden there's Kruger two bones and you're like, Oh my, my circle player doesn't play Kruger two bones. And, um, your army gets pushed out on scenario and you lose and you've, Maybe you feel <laughs> helpless, like, what could I have done against that? It, these are questions you've never had to think about. So it doesn't stop there. Because then when you go to a two-day convention, um, LVO, PAX, uh, lock and load, uh, I'm sure there's a crap ton of Euro European uh, tournaments as well, BonesCon. You go to these really big conventions, and there's a big difference between day one and day two. And every single round, because there might be hundreds of players there or over 100 players or close to 100 players. So when you go into one of the master seat, you make it through. You've been smashing the conventions and you've just been smashing the local tournaments. Um, you make it through the first two or three rounds. And then you start playing against the people that are smashing the conventions and smashing the local tournaments from where they are. And it's an entirely different game. Uh, getting to day two of a convention is a really it's a really good goal. It's something I aspire for. It's something I want to be able to do someday. And it's not easy. And it's just like when you beat the local tournaments and you went to the convention, when you, or when you go to the bigger tournaments, when you go to a convention, you are going to see the people that are winning all their bigger tournaments. And you're going to see that next level of players and round one, you might just walk right into JVM playing some new list that you've never even seen before. And he's like, yeah, I think this is going to be good. And then he's going to smash you with this new list playing some Bethane or some freaking Legion Warlock you've never even seen or heard of before. That's just going to happen. Uh, when I went to lock and load round one of my master's heat, I got Brandon Andrews playing ghost fleet and scar one. And I had a cyan shadows and I was like, well, let's, let's do this. I'm going to take down his freaking ghost fleet. I've been preparing for this. I've been thinking about it. No clue what scar one did. Um, spoiler alert. He went to win the whole freaking convention and he knocked me out. He dropped uh, scar one and I was like, oh, there's, there's these wraith engines and things. Um, I don't have very many magic weapons and then go figure a Wraith engine kills a Scion. Surprise, surprise. So that, that just, that just happens. You're going to meet the larger than life players, the top level players, the top dogs. Um, it's, and the, that going to these conventions, you're going to invest a, a large amount of time and money and it, it look at it as a learning experience. Once you've been to a lot of conventions and you do well and you're making it to round two somewhat normally, that's when you can start setting expectations for yourself. The whole point of this video is what to expect when you're breaking into these next level tournaments and to not kill yourself and punish yourself and beat yourself up for the way things go. Because I'm here to tell you, it's normal. The first couple of times through the first one to three times, it's going to be a little bit of a rough experience, but then it gets better and it gets fun and you recognize people and you form bonds, you fr form friendships and you start doing better and you're more confident and it, it's just a great time. And it can be a great time the first couple of times through too. You know what? Winning's not everything and you can also win. I mean, I'm not saying you can't. I just, it's not healthy to have those expectations unless you've done it before and you've got a great pulse on the meta and you've been there and you've done that. And then the expectations can sort of start to follow because you've got a benchmark. So I hope, I hope this video is useful. Um, I hope people can avoid the shell shock. I went through it. Um, one of my friends recently went through it and it's just kind of been that way. Uh, as far as I can remember, um, every level increase is, is kind of a shocker. But it, it's a better shocker. It makes you stronger. It sets your sights on what's really out there. And it improves you because your standards improve. And I hope this video was of use. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.